James chapter number four. Let's see what James had to share with us in the Bible from the Word of God. James chapter four, round about verse thirteen through verse number fifteen. Amen. Today I'll be reading from the New King James Version. I think it'll read a little easy for us today. James chapter number four, verse thirteen through verse fifteen. Are we all there? Here's what the writer said. He said, come now, you who say, today or tomorrow we will go to such and such a city. We'll spend a year there, buy and sell and make a profit. Where you do not know what will happen tomorrow. Someone should say amen. amen. He said, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeared for a little time and then vanish away. He says, stay at your office, say, if the Lord will, we will live to do this or that. But now you are boast in your, in your arrogance, all such boastings as evil. Amen. And you may be seated. Church this morning from James Wright to the people, you remind us that this is our thought today behind our lesson. Time is not on our side. Time is not on our side. Together, let us pray. Our merciful Father to the great God of heaven, how we bless be your name, Jehovah. Our kind and our merciful Father, we will come this day in this place to worship you, to magnify your name. We are reminded of Jesus, his love and his sacrifice that he did that we might live. We are so thankful for your long suffering, for your watchfulness, for your protection, and for your deliverance. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for being a kind and a merciful God and not dealing with us according to our wickedness or our wicked way. We pray, kind Father, that your people, you will continue to watch us in the blood of Christ for give us of the sin that we have done contrary to your word and willing to wait. We are so ever thankful for those who took time to come and visit with us this day. We pray as we feast upon your word that we may all be encouraged to believe and obey the glorious gospel of Christ. Pray, kind Father, for your fellow saints who have fallen and just seem not to want to come back and just disrupted. We pray for your stir and trouble of mind that they may have a mind for them that they may turn and serve you and be faithful to death. Help us this day, Heavenly Father, to grow and be transformed through the training of your truth and to the people who call us to be. For this we ask and this we give thanks to Jesus the Christ, your Son, and our Savior. And let all that agree say amen. Amen. Our church just reminded that time is not on our side. And since time is not on our side, I need to move right through with the lesson. <laughs> it's not on our side. So I'm going to remind you, Brother Hill, you know we're in the love month. So I just want to leave and uh, hold hands with my loved one. And I promise we will, I can't promise you nothing, but I, I, I'll make this, I'll try to give you some time. You know? Church, here are two things for us to consider this morning from our lesson when it concerns uh, about time. Number one, life is short. Time is short. You know? And since time is short, you know, we need to include God, first of all, in all our plans. So those two things we need to talk about. Life is short. Time is short. And then we need to include God in all our plans. We need to do that. For those that will say, or some who will say, let us make our plan big. We'll do this and that for our big profit. Even to those who have spoken with the star. I'm not talking about the ones out of Hollywood or down your street. The one that are up in the celestial heaven. Those who will get up early in the morning consider before they even move or get a cup of coffee or get the joe or whatever they want to get. You got to look at your horoscope. Yeah, brother. Somebody's still reading the horoscope. I want to make sure. And some of y'all are still going down to Madam Ruby and Tuesday and reading your TV and all that. Some have even went as far as get both palms read. Huh? They said, yes, I want to be sure. But let me remind us, you know, uh, that God says, uh, don't add them up too quick. Don't count your chicken before they hatch. Huh? Don't add things up too fast concerning time and success. For only God knows that can control the boat. So if you want to know what's going to happen, uh, give away your TV, just make it for tea. If your horoscope, just use that newspaper to start your fire. Yes, and when you get ready to consult the stars, make sure it's God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. So those are the stars you need to consult because time is not on our side. Church, I say life is short simply because life is short. You can be here one day, 100 days, or 
one year, two years, 100 years. You just don't know when you're going to go. Amen. You pick up the paper, cut on the news, you can tweet, get a tweet text, you know. Somebody ain't made it. Somebody didn't make it. Amen. Somebody right now struggling for life. Amen. Some right now didn't, didn't get up, they laid down, but they didn't get up. Yeah. Some are just missing. You don't know what happened to them. You saw them and they don't hear no more. Over in October 1981, I know that's before some of our time, but that was a young son, right, by the name of Rod Stewart. Uh, somebody said, you can write down my album. Yeah, I can see it. Uh, yeah. He wrote a song about a two couple, they were, just, they were just head over heels in love. Young people, this ought to be right for you. Billy, he was a young fella, and Patty was his sweetheart. They said Billy left home with a dot in his pocket. Say, man, he had a head full of dreams. He said somehow, someway, it's got to get better than this. And then he whispered to Patty. She packed her bag. She left a note for her mama. She was only 17. Uh, there were tears in her eyes when she kissed her little sister goodbye. They held each other tight, and they drove all through the night. They were so excited. Y'all thought I was going to sing, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> He told Patty, he said, we only just got one shot at life. Listen real good, church. He told Patty, we only got one shot at life. Let's take it while we're still not afraid. Church, I believe a lot of God's people, you know, they're afraid to go through life, afraid to trust God, yes, and to walk by faith. Mm -hmm. yes. But Billy told Patty, he said, listen, we only got one shot at life. You know, let's take it while we're not afraid. He said, because life is so brief, and time is a thief when you're undecided. He said, like a fistful of sand, they can slip right through your hand. Simply, you know the song. I know I do. <laughs> he, said, uh, he said, that's how life is. Mm. That's raw, stupid. But then again, he comes back and he says things this way. He said, young hearts, be free tonight. Time is on your side. Somebody lie. Yes, sir. He said, time is on your side. Mm. He said, don't let them put you down. He said, don't let them push you around. Don't let them change your point of view. He said, time. It's on your side. Young hearts, be free tonight. In the meantime, we live our life like that, like we got time in abundance. Like we got a room or a warehouse and all that's in there is time. We just go in when our leisure, just get a little more time to take with us. But church, I'm here to remind you, like God said, life is short. Time is uncertain. The writer says again in James chapter 4, verse 13, said, come now, you who say today or tomorrow, we will go to such and such a city. We'll spend a year there, buy and sell and make a profit, where you do not know what will happen tomorrow. He said, for what is your life? It's even a vapor, vapor that appeared for a little while and then vanish away. God is just simply trying to remind us that this is time is not on your side. You can look back and say, well, I lived 15 years. You can't look forward and say you got 15 more. You can't even say you got 15 more seconds, 15 more days. Amen. Come on. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The first thing you can say is, I know what happened back there. That's all in the past. Mm -hmm. I'm just praying and hoping that God will bless me with some more time. Because time is not on our side. Time really ain't on our side. Throughout history, you, you know what? And even right now today, many hold to the notion, Brother Kenson, we got plenty of time. Everything worked all right last week. We already look at the seven-day forecast. Thank you, we'll be here Friday. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, please. Come on. Just a few seconds to do some stuff. Someone heard when I said that we got time on our hand. They turned on the lights up and trying to run out. <laughs> That's all right. I came to pass. We look back, you know, we said, look, if everything went all right last year about this time, I'm going to be here next year about this time, too. You know you do. You have to be with yourself. We make a plan. Nothing wrong with making a plan. But church, I'm telling you, time ain't on your side. I think we just got plenty of time. We got plenty of time to get our act together. Mm. Church, I remember when I was going to school. My teacher would always tell me, he said, Frank, you better wake up and fly right. I would say, I got plenty of time to get this right. He said, you better hit those books and learn your ABCs and learn your arithmetic and all that mm -hmm. other stuff. I got plenty of time to get this stuff right. Church, you ain't got plenty of time. 
Amen. You mess up in those relationships that you deal one with another. Ah, you start playing these little games, you know, hide and seek, you know, and all this other stuff, you know, tag you in and all that other stuff. We start playing the dozen and doing this with everybody. We think we're just going to go through life and be happy and enjoy life. But by whatever means, it never fails. These things happen. Sickness comes up. Amen. Sickness come up. Yes, sir. Come on. There's an injury to you or somebody else in your family. Amen. Then you got challenges in your house. You know, you thought y'all were tight, and then all of a sudden something happened. Y'all bust up. You over here, they over there. Everything just start falling apart. You thought you had time. And then, yes, even death comes and level the playing field. Mm. You thought you had plenty of time. Now you're looking for that time you thought you had. Yes. Yeah. You ain't got plenty of time. You say, well, I'm going to do this here. You hear this all the time. If you don't, you'll hear it today. <laughs> Many times, young men have been told, they'll whisper in your ear, or sit down and look at your face and face. They say, young fella, you got plenty of time. Go out there, sow your wild oats. Just have a good time. And come then on. when you just got enough time, come on, give that Preach extra it. time to Jesus. Right. Folk, that's on you. Lie and a trick. Amen. Come on, preach it. You ain't got plenty of time. Yes, sir. I had friends of mine. We joined the military. And we thought we could do this or that. We thought we were invincible. We had people trying drugs for the first time. I rode all the way from Yuma, Arizona in an ambulance with a friend. He didn't even know who I was. He was strung out on drugs. All because he tried it one time. I got time. If I don't get it right this time, I get it right this next time. Oh, we got young men and young women. They whispering that I love you and you love me and all that. And next thing you know, you got the baby. Where is he? Well, yeah. Come on, preach. Yeah. Come on, preach. Come on. You're saying the same yeah. thing to somebody else. You think you got time. Mm. And then we have young men been, you know, sucked in by the bat of the eye. And pretty soon you got all kinds of diseases and injuries and all that. Simply because of the bat of the eye. Oh, you got time to get it right. So you wild don't you'll be okay. Jesus knows. Yeah, he knows. He knows you don't have plenty of time to get it right. Amen. He knows you're going out there messing up your life and you say, well, uh, I got plenty of time to get it right. Church, I believe this. I don't care if anybody else don't believe this, but this is what I believe about the devil. I believe that long ago, somewhere, the devil stood up or sat down in his war room. And he sized up the whole battle plan. He said, only if I could get men to buy into this notion that you got plenty of time. He said, if I could just somehow fit that, where they could just eat it all up, that they got plenty of time. He said, I know I'll win the battle. He said, if I can get folks, folks just to buy in, just to listen to it, you got plenty of time. Plenty of time. The devil said, listen, if I get them to buy into this, it, I could disrupt them in that labor for God. What do you mean, Brother Hill? The devil said, listen, if, if I can get you to sit where you are, do what you're doing, think you got plenty of time to do what you want, play around and do what. He said, I'll, I'll disrupt your, your labor for God. What do you mean? You won't spread the gospel. You won't take advantage of telling somebody about Jesus, whether they're your enemy, your family member, your cousin, your aunt, your uncle, your boyfriend. You, you'll say, listen, I got plenty of time. I ain't going to mess with you. That's next year about this time I'll say something to you about Jesus. Huh? And then you won't care how you live because you think you got plenty of time to get it right. He said, well, I just live this old ragged life. It ain't real ragged, but you know, I just do what I want to do, and I'll just be what I want to be because this is all about me. Folks, don't you know that you're living? Your life affects other folks, huh? People will look at you, read you before they open up a Bible. They'll say, you got a relationship with God? They'll see you going through life. You won't pray. You won't consult God on anything. You won't be a light. You won't be an example. You won't stand for anything. You won't stand on God's promises. You won't proclaim the truth. You won't be a good steward of what he bless you with. Because you say, listen, I got plenty of time. Right now, this is my time. God, you know, hold on, hold up just a moment. I put some God in it later on. Other folks are seeing it. The devil say, if I can just get you to hold on, buy into that, you got plenty of time. He said, then I could blind them from seeing it. God's work. Yes. Well, what is God's work? Mm. God's work is to make souls like Jesus. God wants to go out and be a good example. He wants to go out and restore men's life, revive them through the gospel. Y'all know about CPR, don't you? When a man go down or somebody go down and you 
grab me and say, shake him, Anna, Anna, are you okay? You say, hey, I know CPR. Can I help? Can I revive you? Well, we got the gospel. You know, men are dying. They need to be revived. You say, I got the gospel. Do you want it? Whether they want it or not, try to give it to them. Try to revive people. Yeah. So that's God's work of trying to restore men and build and restore people's lives. You got new converts. Somebody know the new convert. But then, you know, we try to call them up, the phone them and change. You would drive by and say, post off in the box. <laughs> well, so we're trying to restore people's lives, huh? And then we got relationships in the family. Church, my family, just like your family, everybody ain't close to my family. I know everybody ain't close in your family. Some folks, some folks in your family, you only hear about when they need something. Some folks, you don't even see them, you know, they just show up. And then somebody in your family, you got Uncle Bubba or Uncle Joe or somebody, you know, that you really hope they can show up. Well, it's the same way in a church. Huh? In a church, I think that's a cross section of what's and who's in the world, huh? And some folks, you know, you just might as well admit it. You say, well, I see uh, Mary Sue coming. I show me she had to stay away from worship today. It's a shame, but that's how things are. And then you're trying to get next to folks, and, and they're just hard-headed, stubborn, but you try to still encourage them in the Lord. Don't give up on them. You know, don't try to love me from a distance. You'll tell me the truth whether I like it or not, but still, we're in the family. We're in the family. You ain't got nothing to do about that. They were born into the family. We're all in the family. So we still got to treat people right in the family. He said, well, Brother Hill, I just don't feel close. See, throw your feelings out. Yes, sir. You can feel anyway, but that ain't going to change stuff. God still tells us to do this and do that with the family. Yeah. Is it going to be rough sometimes? Yes, ma'am, it will be rough sometimes. Will it get on your last nerve and under your knee? Yes, yeah, it will get on your last nerve and we'll get on your knee. Huh? But still, we're in the family. Huh? And, and does God want me to forgive people? Yes, he does. And you say, well, why is that? So we can just show the world that we're people of God. It's going to take God's spirit to help us. Yes, it will. That's why he gives us his Holy Spirit to help us after baptism. Because we just can't do this alone. Church, we just don't have enough time. We just don't have enough time. And the devil says, if I can get people just to buy into this, I can just derail them from working the works of God. Someone said, what do you mean by derail? You ever seen a train going down a track? It's got a set course that it's going to go. Now, if the train gets off that track, it ain't going to be able to go where it needs to go. So we as people of God, we're on the rails of life, trying to walk in the light of Jesus. And if the devil can get us to buy into this, that we got plenty of time, he will derail us. We'll get off track. We'll go over yonder, we'll take a detour, we'll be like Betty, Billy and Patty, we'll run through life because we're so excited. Some of us may have a dollar in our pocket, but anyway, we'll go off. Thinking we've got to do all this and do all this before everything happens. We'll let the world dictate to us how we should live, how we should think and what we ought to be. The devil says, if I could just get them to do this, huh? they won't be strong in the Lord. They won't be good example. They won't be a good, good ambassador of Christ. They won't do the things of God. They'll do what they want to do. And the devil said, listen, another one who bites the dust. The devil said, if I can get them to do that, I ain't even got to work hard in this battle. Huh? It's all over. You know, there's uh, one uh, law firm that keeps reminding us that we don't get into do-overs. Folks, this ain't Hollywood that we're living through. Amen. You don't get a chance to cut. Let me try that again. No, you don't, you know. Once you make some decisions, some choices, you know, the ball is already in motion. You just can't go out and just pull things back, huh? Anybody see the commercial when they got cut the feather pillow open and threw all the pillow to the floor and, and they went out that? He said, go catch all that stuff. Folks, you can't go catch that stuff. It's out there. It's gone. It's just like when you send that text or that tweet and he said, oh, I done hit send. Can I get it back? Somebody said, yes, you can. <laughs> but when it come back, it'll be bad coming back. But Amen. Listen, you can't change that stuff. Man. You don't set the sin button. You don't made your choice. You don't made your decision. And with decisions come consequences. Right. You say, oh, I sure wish I hadn't done that. Oh, yeah. I sure wish I hadn't done that. But now you got to deal with the consequences. The older people used to say when I was coming up, you make your bed hard, you got to lay it. Amen. You make it too soft, you got to lay it too. So as you go through life, you know, what you dish out, you know, oh, you're going to reap what you sow. You're going through life, you know, tearing up relationships and tearing people down, and you know, you're being this and being that, guess what? That's what you're going to get. 
So folks are just trying to remind us, we ain't got time. Side. We don't have any do-overs, huh? If you keep going through life, you know, getting it wrong because you think you got a lot of time to fool around down here. Playing silly and worth the game and, and with each other and on each other. Think we got plenty of time to fix things and fix relationships. Uh, yeah, pretty soon you, you're going to run out of time with nothing fixed. And then the devil will say, I didn't tell you so, but that's what's going to happen to you. You bought into my plan that you got time, but time ain't on the other side. And then lastly, church, uh, since we don't have time on our side, we must include God first in our plan. Notice what the writer says in James chapter 4, verse 15 and 16. In James chapter 4, he said, instead, now you don't already say we're going to go over here and do this and that. Hadn't even consulted God or anything. We said, we're going over here and we're going to do this and that. This is how this is going to go down. This is going to be the outcome of it. The writer said, you ought to say if the Lord wills, we shall live and do this and that. But now you're boasting your arrogance. All such boasting is evil. The writer is just simply trying to remind the church, you know, there's nothing wrong with planning. As Christians, you know, we need to plan stuff. We need to be thinking stuff. But when we start trying to make plans and make plans without God in the plan, yeah. consulting God yes. in the plan, that's what the problem is. Yeah. Amen. Because we have made some plans without trying to consult God. When was the last time we included God and sought God instruction for our plan? When was the last time? Just think about it. Say, look here, I'm getting ready to get a job. Lord, I already prayed for the job, but this job I'm going for the interview. God, show me what, what's, what I need to see. That was the last time we did that. We just run down to the interview, put our best on and get in there and say, <laughs> we ain't setting up no prayer. We're going to ask the church to pray for it. I think it's going to be real good. This is what I'm going to get. We ain't going to talk to God about nothing. Amen. And then, you know, we don't want to. So God said, God, now help me when I go to the interview. I just don't be silly. Amen. Said, Brother, what are you saying? Money, yeah. Amen. Money, Come on. Please. And then say, look, at, what's going to happen? Do I have to work weekends? Do I have to work Sunday? Is it going to interfere with my relationship with God? What about Wednesday night? Am I going to have Bible class? Are they going to have on the yo yo? They just calling me and I got to call them. They calling me. They're consulting God about this job. And then if I do take the job, what about my character? What would I represent, you know, on this job? But you just foolish for the money. This is going to be my first job. This is going to be my stepping stone. But you need to consult God about that job. Huh? When was the last time we asked God, say, what are we doing? You know, is this going to be this? Is it's going to be all right. Can I do this? Huh? Young people, I know when I was dating, I ain't asked God, say, God, now, uh, shall I date this person? <laughs> I asked myself. Myself, <laughs> 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 yes, yeah, let's go. I think it's going to be real good. Let's see how you can consult God. And then you say, well, you know, uh, where do we need to go? So where would the lights are going? In the dark? Let's make it late. And let's make it sure that I'm doing the right. But anyway, let's get back in the lesson. <laughs> when the last time we asked God, what shall I do? What must I do? And what shall I do? Either thing, you know, as just, you know, there's a war between the spirit and the flesh. We're not going to come out and just say, you know, God, uh, I got these feelings and, uh, you know, you got to help me because, you know, if I get out there, they're going to be right. You know? uh, put a block up there or something, you know. Uh, we ain't going to ask God to do that. We're going to say, look, we look for loopholes. <laughs> so well. If I do this, I can repent, you know, while I do it, you know. And then it's, if everybody else is doing it, I might as well get my mix in. Yes, yes. Uh, church. We gotta include God in our plan. Amen. Amen. Mm. If you would, uh, we all like cars down here, Mike. We all like cars traveling down here through life. Let me see, can I share a little light? Uh, we got any car enthusiasts out there? Y'all know, you know cars, y'all see yeah. cars. Uh, anybody know what the mini is? The little, little yeah. car? Yeah. 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 Let me try that again. Yes, sir. Y'all see the mini car? Yeah. Yeah. Mini Cooper. Mini Cooper. Well, some of us are like the Mini Cooper. So why do you say that? We all fill with many excuses. Why are we going to serve God? You ever notice a lot of excuses? Why are you going to serve God? Well, the weather is not with me now. Uh, you know, my bunions, they 
uh, hey, I'm getting older, you know, uh, uh, you know, I just, uh, you know, I got bladder issues, you know, I need to sit in the back, and by the time I get there, it's all filled. I don't want to run in and out of the restroom disturbing anybody. You're sitting in the back. They don't care if you go to the restroom, you know, you're here to worship God. Let me feel with many excuses why we don't serve God. We're filled with many and much trouble. You ever seen Christian and Brother Kiss are some of the most troubled people, you know? The most sour people, the most unhappy people. Mm -hmm. They just feel with much trouble because yeah. they've been listening to the world. Right. The world been dictating how you live, how you do this, and how y'all feel, how y'all do. We just suck that in like we're sucking that shake out of the straw. <laughs> you just listen to the world. And when God has left the word and instructed us how we're going to live, we feel with the Spirit. We happy in the Lord. Rejoice evermore. But we just feel with much trouble listening to the word. We say, Paul Moses, I can't do it. I can't make it. You just got through saying I can do all things through Christ and strength. Me. Now you turn around and say, oh, I can't make it. I can't get over, you know. Trouble always in my way. I just don't know what we going to do, you know, how we going to make it, you know. And then we are bent on hurting the many because we've been hurt by the many. You ever seen hurt people? They want to hurt everybody else. Misery love company. They want to turn nothing over to Jesus. You know what I'm saying? We sang this song, they clapped and said, Jesus will fix it, but he can't fix what you got. You hurt him, but you, you want to hurt other folks. They like the many. And then uh, they're the fiat. <laughs> What do you mean by fear? Stay with me. The fear of saints who live life fast. They live life on impulse. Anything goes. They live without any reverence to God. The fear. They just do what they want to do, when they want to do it, how they want to do it. Don't care who sees or who don't see. The fear. And then they are the jettas. <laughs> Well, you got to watch out for the jealous. These are your jealous saints. who are filled with envy. They're troubled souls. Huh? They are traitors of God's righteousness. They once were for God, but now they're against God. And then they're trying to drag everybody else against God. And then these are the jealous. They're angry. Oh, folks, some of the Christians, you know, are just some angry people. What are you mad and angry about? Sometimes they're just upset with themselves. And then they want to kill everybody else in. They're angry. You need to watch out for these saints. The writer in Proverbs chapter 22, verse 24 through 25, he said this. Uh, let me see if you pull that up on the screen. Proverbs chapter 22, 24 and 25. He said you have to be careful about the jealous, the jealous, the envious, the troubled souls, and those the traitors of God's righteousness. And then those people that are angry. They love me. Oh, yeah, it's up there. It says, it says it this way. He said, be careful about just getting comfortable with an angry folk. Did he say anything about it? Make no friendship with an angry man. Amen. If a furious man should I not go. What's the other verse say? Lest that what? Lest that learn his way. And get a snap to that soul. He said what he really said is this there. Don't hang around the jealous. He said what you do, you start learning to happen. And then what else is going to happen? You'll transform into a jet. See, that movie Transform, that ain't the first Transformers. So that's a bit of a Transform, you know what I'm waiting for that. You start hanging around angry, nasty, mean people, you're going to be angry, nasty, mean yourself. You'll be just like them. So God reminds us and warns us. He said, watch out for these. Like I say, church, we're something just like a car traveling down here. Don't get caught up with it, huh? We're just like uh, trucks, vans, and pickups. Huh? Mm -hmm. uh, somebody said, wait a minute, now you, you, you're in there too deep now. Huh? <laughs> trucks, vans, and pickups. Some of us are just going through like trucking around a whole lot of junk. <laughs> just trucking around a whole lot of junk. God trying to fill our mind with the things of God. But we let's listen to the word, getting all kinds of junk, get all kinds of ideas about this and about that. You know, We want to take the word of God and just throw it out the window. Don't want to use it, but we want to know what the word will say live our life like that. We're just hauling around a whole lot of junk. Huh? Vans, trucks, and pickup. Some of us are just trucking around with a whole lot of junk. We haven't vanguarded our relationship with God. Just think about this for a moment. We're working
work on everything. We work on it with all our might, with all our strength, try to fix certain things. You know, you give me a little tap around the house, if I just got a little dripping, leaky faucet, oh man, I got a little about this, get six or seven, eight, gasket break out my leather suede belt, go to work it, get my caught gun, try to fix it. That just was some appliances. But when it comes down to things about your relationship with God, how to mend that and fix that and make sure it's tight and there's no cracks in it, guess what? We won't do too much about that. Our prayer life will go off the deep end. We'll just throw up those three prayers, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. We'll look at the church building and say, pray for those that are sick. We'll come to the conclusion other folks are praying for. We hear people stand up for this and that and somebody got a request or something like that. We won't even look into the need or try to reach out and help someone because, you know, I don't know them that well. They just got here. Well, we'll do things like that, you know. When we ain't working on relationship with God and relationship with one another, we'll come into a building and look around and say, hey, somebody's in my favorite seat. We'll get mad right then. Church ain't bought no seat. <laughs> Amen. 
right now, that, that wind coming in pretty strong, huh? But you will have God in there with you. Somehow God will blow out the window, or we'll push him out. And then we say, oops, I done lost Jesus. I'll come back and get him on my way back. Guess what? You ain't coming back. You know, you got to go to God, and that's what you really want to do, and that's what the devil got you to do. Look in your Bible, if you would, just quickly, and then the lesson. Revelation chapter 12, verse 12. We try to wrap this story up. A we time and not on our side. Revelation chapter 12, verse 12. The writer simply said this about it. That the war that took place in heaven long ago, you know, when the devil was in heaven and God got angry with him because he wanted to be like God. He got lifted up in pride. He wanted to take on God's position. But the writer said this. The devil, God moved quickly. Sometimes be careful, church. God moved quickly in your life. So the writer said that God kicked him out of heaven. Oh, where did he go? He's coming down to earth. The writer said the devil is in water to have this down here because the devil, he's angry, he's mad, and he's mad with God. He's mad with everybody else. You're trying to be God, then he's mad with you too. And then even if collateral that he's mad with everybody, everything that God has created. He said he's mad. He come down with a vengeance on those. He's taking wrath. He, and then the Bible, he said, listen, he's coming down here because he knows he only has but a short time. He said, brother, why are you telling that story about the devil? Here's why I'm telling that story about the devil. See, the devil understands what's going on. This is real. Amen. Amen. See, church, sometimes we, we, we go up through life, we don't think this stuff is real. Amen. For a long time, when I was growing up, even as I got older, you know, I really did Christianity. It really didn't take hold on me. It really didn't seem real. People are talking about people are dying. I'm trying to, I'm trying to wrap my mind around it. They ain't coming back. Mm. They ain't coming back. Amen. After this, the judgment. What kind of life did they live? Did they please God? Were they obedient to God? This stuff is real. It ain't like in the Westerns, you know, after the cut, cut, they get up, dust themselves off. Oh, that was a good cake. Huh? <laughs> Church, when things happen to us, when they say ash and ash and dust, to us, yes, sir, yes, sir. and you in there, you ain't getting out. Amen. Amen. It's, it's on to see you make. Whether you believe God or not. Amen. Whether you believe the Bible or not. You ain't coming back. Yes, it ain't going to be like Buddha. You're going to get another stage. You might Come be on, man. This time, since you live real good, you're going to move you up to a higher level. You might be a pig. Yeah, no. You ain't coming back. Preach, yeah. brother. You ain't coming back. How you live? What you did before God, that time he gave you it, he gave you this body, made you a steward of it, how you dealt with people, how you dealt with yourself, Amen. how you dealt with God. Yes, you gonna stand before the judges? You don't need no help standing. You don't need nobody to come and say, hey, I've got a character witness. God said, no, all right. It's time to add in. You're going to give a character. You go there kicking and screaming, it don't matter. God said, I got plenty of time. He's going to deal with it. Plenty of time. Church, I'm trying to wrap my mind around this. Listen to me. When I leave, I ain't coming back. So I got to make sure when I go out, when I exit, I want to be covered by the blood. Amen. Church, you got to be covered by the blood. You got to know what God wants you to do. You got to work with all your might, with all your strength. You got to do that. See, we can take a lesson from the devil. The devil said, listen to me. I know this thing is real. God already told him what he's going to do to me. He kicked me out of heaven. I already gave him one example. Mm -hmm. He said, listen, the next stop, hey, fire. The devil said, you're right about that. Mm -hmm. He said, now I'm down in this earth. Guess what? Everything that you created, everything, I'm going to try to destroy that. That's what I got to do. That's the devil's job. And he's been doing that ever since he's been kicked out of hell. And guess what? You in the picture too. Amen. He said, well, the devil ain't messing with me. <laughs> Yo, you fool yourself. <laughs> well, me and the devil, we all right. He's still over there, I stay over here. He's already got you. You ain't doing what God asked you to do. You saw the devil. Well, brother, you know, I ain't be a bad person. I ain't killing, I ain't stealing, I ain't messing with nobody. Why? You know, all that stuff. I ain't doing it. I think I'm pretty good. See, that's your stat. You got to open up the book, the Word of God, and say, Ooh, look here. I'm just nasty and dirty like the rest of the I got to get myself right. Amen. That's what I'm going to say. You can't be hoping and wishing. Or wishing and hoping. Because you 
you ain't got a lot of time. Time ain't on your side. Church, we go through life. It ain't just here in Jacksonville, but around the world. People are just playing church. We just playing church. We'll come in, we got things down to a sign. Three songs of prayer. And then the preaching. Oh, we got that down. If I can make you do that, I'm going to hang on for the communion. It ain't going to take about 10 minutes for the communion, and then I'm out of here. I done checked the box. Oh, yeah, I forgot. I got my connection. I put my dollar in the plate. It'll be all right. And then I'll check that box. But ain't nothing changed, in it? You know, done that from January, where we at now, February, fourth Sunday, five Sunday, doing about the seventh, eighth Sunday. Ain't nothing changed. You get the word of God, don't change your life. You don't want to make a change, but New Year's resolution. This is my year. It's going to be mine. I'm going to give my blessing. It's going to be a breakthrough. Ain't nothing but thinking about blessing God. By like giving him a life of service. Huh? We say, but we want God, we want to bless him, but we don't want to bless God with a life of service. We don't want to obey him. We don't want to be lights and shine. We don't want to do anything like that. Sometimes, you know, the people really get under my skin at work. Y'all pray for me. They'll come out and, you know, oh, it's, the, it's the new year. I got some resolution. I'm going to do this. I'm going to give all that. I said, well, you know, I said, pray for me. So I said, well, uh, this is a good time to give God. Life of service. Give something. You give him gifts, you know. And you say at Jesus' birthday, give him your life. Your life of service. I don't say I'm going to disappear simply. But anyway, sometimes that happens with folks in the church. He said, let's give God a life of service. Brother Kenson, we see him two weeks. That next month they go. They'll change the phone number and the address. Both of them. They don't disappear. I think they've been covered and hid by the government. But anyway, they're gone. <laughs> the church is trying to remind us, you know, that we can take a lesson from the devil. The devil says, listen, I ain't got a little short time. I need to work the works. I need to work my work. And that is to destroy the things of God. Now, we need to have that same attitude. What do you mean? We only have a short time. As God people, we need to be trying to destroy the works of the devil. Yeah. We need to be trying to tear down stuff that he's trying to build up. We need to give people the gospel. I ain't say shove it down his throat. Right. But take time out to share the gospel with people. Yeah. Tell people, say, listen, yeah. God ain't pleased. Yeah. He wants to save you. He wants to deliver you. Yeah. He wants you to be in his family. You just share that with people about how they can become a Christian. You have done your part. And go on to the next person. And on to the next person. If you can have that mindset, that's what God wants to have, that mindset that we're ambassadors of Christ, that we're down there trying to Fight against the devil. You can't beat him by yourself. You need God's word. You need his Holy Spirit to help you. So that's what God wants to do. But if we have bought into this notion that we got plenty of time, that it's somebody else's job, the deacons and the preacher, it's their job to tell people about Jesus. What's going to happen to those folk that's in your circle? It'll be a while before we get to your circle. So that's why you're there. To tell people about Jesus. Do the best you can, but tell them. Because time ain't on your side. Rod Stewart said it's like sand. It'll flip right through your hand. You ain't got time. Don't need to be fearful. Because you only got one shot at life. Make it count. Make it in the door. Church, I know today we talk more about God's people and how we should be living to please God. But if you're here this morning, you're not a Christian, you're not a child of God, you're not been obedient to the gospel become a Christian this morning. How can I do that? That is something to be pleased in God's sight. You need to understand some things that God already set in motion. He sent Jesus, his son, only son from heaven. He came and died, lived on this life, proclaimed God to the world, died a cruel death on the cross that you and I might live, shed his blood. He died on the cross. He was buried in a borrowed tomb. Three days he stayed. But by the power of God, he raised us. How you say, Brown? With all power. Jesus raised with all power. That's the gospel. That's the good news that God can save us and deliver us through his son. That's the gospel. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 and 1 through 4. Paul preached the gospel. You need to understand and believe that Jesus is the Son of God. That he died, that you and I might live. That's the first step. You need to believe that Jesus is. 
He made that confession. Come down these I confess your faith. I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Repent of your sins. Be willing to be baptized in the watery grave of baptism. It's a command from God. So why do I have to go into a watery grave of baptism? God set this thing in motion. I just say amen. He said in baptism, he washes your sins away. He gives you his Holy Spirit. He adds you to his family church, which is a church of Christ. God makes no mistake. He knows what he's doing. So you rise to walk in the newness of life. You need to be faithful to death, trusting God all the way until you die or until Jesus comes. Perhaps, you know, we went too fast through that with you. Perhaps you want to sit and study with some more about Jesus, about his church that God asked you to. We'll do that for you today. We'll be at the back. If you got any questions, we'll answer those things for you. If anything we said in the lesson that was not clear, we'll be back there to try to clear the whole things up. But church will just need to remind us we just don't have a lot of time. We just don't have a lot of time. In the world, if you buy into that, if you buy into the things of the devil, going to lose all the time because we don't have enough time. Time ain't on our side. That's our lesson this morning. If you're here, you need to obey the gospel. If you come and together stand and sing the song of invitation, I want you to come to Jesus today. Yeah, and so what do you think funding from the fold of God? Here you die the invitation. Why so tall is all we can't be? Why the pain? 